Hi everyone, I'm Phil from Tech for Text. Today we're going to be looking at this Dark Rock TF2 from Be Quiet. It retails for around about $79.99 and we have links in the description just below. Okay, as you can see, we've got a Be Quiet Dark Rock TF2 box here. You can see the cooler on the front. It's on their usual black box. This is what they class as a high-end cooler, so not a low-end or entry or whatever versions they want to call it. This is what they class as their high-end model. It says no compromise, silence and performance. That's pretty much it for the front. doesn't say much else on there. On the side on there, it gives you a little bit about Be Quiet as well as specifications, including what it fits on and stuff like that, just to give you a rough idea. The ideal applications for this is high resolution gaming and multimedia, uh, overclock systems, demanding systems that requiring a top flow cooler, because again, this is a top flow cooler, so the fan is on the top of it rather than the side of the cooler, so it'll blow down over the CPU and the socket. It comes with a silent wing free 135 millimeter fan on there as well, so and it's got a powerful dual heat sink layout. Out. This will work with sockets 1200, 1266 or the 1150s, 1211-3 uh, square ILM and AMD AM4, AM3 Plus and it should work with the new Intel socket but again they haven't really said exactly what will work on that but speculation is that it should work on there as well. On the back of the box it shows you some more pictures and information so you can see on here it's showing you information about the fan on there as well as the base of the actual uh, heatsink and what it looks like on a motherboard. On this side you've got a QR code which is currently unoperational because the product has yet been released at the time of reviewing it. On the top it does say that it is 230 30 watts TDP so that should be good enough to run pretty much most uh, or should I say it should be good enough to cool most CPUs on the market without a problem. Okay so inside the box this is what we've got let's start with the least important first of all we've got the manual which has got a QR code which will take you to the manual which seems a bit daft having a manual if it's going to take you to the manual online so ideally this should just be using the QR code on the box save paperwork and so forth you've also got disposal information there as well why that can't all be in one or on the website as well using the QR code who knows it's a little bit of a waste if you ask me you've got a splitter cable here that's to combine the two fans together so they'll work off of one socket on the motherboard which is a, a four pin PWM uh, socket so that gives you a rough idea. It does come with some thermal paste. It doesn't have any branding on the thermal paste. So I'm presuming it's Be Quiet's own brand. You've got four clips. This is to clip the two fans onto the cooler. We'll get uh, a little bit more information about that in a few seconds. Uh, but basically, yes, it is two fans which will be connecting up to this. And then you've got two bags, which both come in a bag itself, with all the connections you need for either Intel or AMD. So it lets you fit it and obviously fit it on the board to how you need it and wish. Okay, so this is what the cooler looks like, or at least when it's assembled. So you can see that you've got that push-pull configuration with the two fans. So this one basically sucks the air in from obviously above, down through the actual heat sinks and at the bottom it then blows it out and then it goes over the actual heat sinks which are just above the actual plate on the bottom which is pretty good. As you can see it's all black, it is aluminium so uh, it should dissipate heat pretty well so that's all good. It can be a little bit fiddly attaching the fans I must admit, uh, can be a bit of a pain and what you'll note is it's best if you put the fans on after you've actually attached it to the motherboard so the opposite way around that and i've done it don't get me wrong if you've got a long enough screwdriver you can get it through the holes uh, to screw into the screws at the bottom but it is a little bit fiddly i would advise you attach the heat sink to the motherboard then attach the fans but again that can make it even more fiddly uh, especially if you're in a tight case because you've got to try and slot that 
fan underneath and then put the clips on then put the one on top and put the clips on but once you have actually done it it does look pretty neat you've got all these heat pipes going through here so you've got basically six heat pipes which go from the top heat sink through the plate on the bottom then into the bottom heat sink here so it's basically cooling from three different areas so the top heat sink where the fans are attached to the smaller heat sink down here and then you've also got some fins on top of the heat plate as well so it's basically going to get a, quite a bit of fresh air on there uh, from all the fans design wise the fans do what say be quiet on there it's the silent wing fan design which we mentioned before which has got these sort of ripples on the blades uh, which is pretty nice it does have be quiet's logo on the side there but depending on how you've got it in your case you might not see that logo on the side in all honesty but otherwise it's a nice looking heavy actual cooler the base itself does have a little peely thing on the bottom and as you can see it's nice and shiny and smooth on the bottom there so it looks pretty good to be honest with you again obviously you're going to need to put thermal paste on but when you do attach this to your motherboard just to give you an idea yes there's no cpu or ram in here but you will put it on so it attaches that way round so like that that way your ram will be able to fit underneath and as you can see there's plenty of room there for your ram it's not really obstructing it unless you get something really obscenely too tall which uh, hopefully you shouldn't do but again this is a top uh, flow fan so basically it sucks the air from above and down and then basically spreads the air across the actual motherboard rather than your traditional heat sink which would usually be positioned sort of like this and suck the air through that way and then out the back fan of your case so obviously it depends on your case design uh, how you can fit them and so forth but again it's still a pretty good cooler for pretty much most cases in all reality down to testing with all our reviews, we use the same machine for doing the testing where applicable. It's the same specification with the same updates, the same programs, the same drivers, and it's not even connected to the internet. And the full specifications of that machine are in the description just below. Also, unlike a lot of other reviews you will see on the market, we set our speeds at 50% and 100% when we're testing. So it gives you a rough idea what sort of noise levels when the machine is running under normal operational speeds and when it's running flat out. Also, when you set things at auto, obviously it means that the fan is going to be adjusting itself and speeding it up when it's doing certain tests and slowing it down and others, giving you false results. So setting things at a specific speed, evens of playing field, between all the devices we have tested. Okay, here we're testing the idle temperature. This is in degrees Celsius with the fan speed running at 50%. Idle temperature is when the machine is sitting for 30 minutes and we check the average temperature over that 30 minutes while the machine is doing nothing. So it's just sitting on the Windows desktop background with nothing running. And here we get 23 degrees Celsius, which was actually one of the warmer ones on testing. But again, when we're talking about 20, 21, 22, 23 degrees, there's not much in it. On this next test, we do a full load test. So this is where the CPU, all the cores are running at 100% speed. Uh, but the fan is set at only 50%. So see how it performs when the fan isn't basically running flat out. And bear in mind there are two fans on this cooler. And we've got 67 degrees. It was actually beat by the Shadow Rock Slim 2 by 3 degrees and about 10 degrees difference between it and the, some of the Arctic coolers. So it's quite a bit of a difference. Now we've done the same test again, but this time the fan speed is running at 100%. So all the cores are going flat out, the fan's going flat out, and it actually caught up with the rest of the pack. So we've got 58 degrees Celsius. It was only one degree behind the Shadow Rock Slim 2, and it was only roughly, what, two degrees behind the Freezer 50 and three degrees between uh, behind the eSports Duo, which was actually pretty good. Next, we overclock the processor to 5.1 gigahertz and do the same test again, full load. And as you can see here, a couple of the coolers couldn't actually finish the test, so they failed, hence they got zero. Uh, and you can actually hear the 
dark rock TF2 actually gets 73 degrees Celsius, which is 2 degrees better than the Shadow Rock Slim 2, and was only 3 degrees behind our uh, winner of the actual graph, which was the Arctic Freezer Duo, which was pretty good going. Now we're checking the decibel levels when the fans are running at 50%. Bear in mind, this has got two fans, and we're getting 50 decibels. That's basically over room decibel level of 45.6 decibels. So again, not bad here, to be honest with you. It uh, could be quieter, but again, for something that's got two fans, it performs pretty well. On this next test, it's basically the same again, but we've run the fans flat out 100%. And again, this has got two fans, so it's going to be louder than some of the others. But again, saying that, it still wasn't that loud. We've got 60 decibels, which is sort of mid table to be honest and actually performs better than some of them out there which have probably only got one fan and so forth for example the arctic freezer 50 which has got two fans was one decibel louder but again one decibels either here or there it's uh, not much in it so in conclusion well we've got a top flow cooler so that sucks the air downwards through the fans then the cooler and then actually over the motherboard and can actually help cool in some of the parts on the actual motherboard as well also it's good because you've got a lot of ram clearance there and again if you're you've got sort of a slim case or something like that where a big cooler can't fit in this may actually do the job don't get me wrong it's not small by any means but because of the shape of it it allows you to fit it in so it's sort of a uh a cone shape is probably the best way of putting it, where it's narrower at the bottom and then it gets wider at the top. It's an all black design, which is ideal for those who like the blacked out cases. Um, not everyone's into RGB, so if you're definitely into a blacked out case or you're not bothered about RGB, then this is probably a good cooler to look at. And don't get me wrong, it's not the cheapest cooler on the market and it's not the best performing. Uh, and it's not the quietest, but basically if you add all the things in what it is, so it's sort of middle of the table on most of the things, and it performs better the more heat it has to dissipate. So in real basics, if you're wanting a really black cooler, which looks pretty good, it's nice and bulky, you've got a good cooling performance, it's quiet, and it's basically everything you want and you can even fit some decent sized ram underneath it it's not the biggest cooler is in height wise so you're not limited with your case or anything like that it's pretty much ticks pretty much most boxes out there don't get me wrong it doesn't excel at any one specific thing but it does well at everything so i can't do anything but highly recommend this product Thank you for watching this video everyone. It's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.